We pity your pathetic dependence on this web video for your weekly news, but here we go anyway. It's April the 4th, 2015. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the nuclear proctologist.org, and you can find these videos at Beautiful Girl Boy Dana on YouTube. We are live streaming at Beautiful Girl by Dana on this particular video. And it's just to update everybody. I'm just waiting for confirmations. Hi, Atom. Missing Sky. Miss Milky. Shani again. Hi, Elaine. Wanna be live 24, Mr. Arenas. And just make sure I get everybody that's in the chat room right now. Starlight. Eric. And I think I got everybody. And so nobody's expecting a live stream, but we've managed to get a stream coming out. Not sure how good this is going. Miss Milky says I'm on, and so we're good to go. <laughs> That's a good uh, benchmark. And so this is unusual. Been on the ocean for several months, and I'm up in Masset. And Masset maintains at the top of the Queen Charlotte Islands of British Columbia. Hi, Candice. And Masset is at the top of the Queen Charlotte Islands, where I'm to right now. And Masset is able to maintain its temperature year-round because of the warm ocean currents from Japan. If you go to their Wikipedia page, you'll actually see them bragging about that. So the ocean currents come over from Japan, but not the radiation. <laughs> That's a fun one, trust me. And so people don't even conceive that, that this is... You know, their Wikipedia page, and this is what they're notorious for, is that warm water from Japan. And all the debris that's washed up here, they've been cleaning it up as it washes up. Missing Sky, and let me see, make sure I got everybody. Uh, Navtel. Audio and videos, both working, Adam says. We'll keep going. And so I got the chat room open, but I got the Adobe Flash. Uh, I, I just cut that off before I went live, and the chat room is still scrolling. And so hopefully this time, because we got such a little bandwidth, but we know that a stream is okay at 2.20, and so I was worried about what might happen. Now there's a link below my video, and it's an insult to all the victims of radiation. It's from the register. And if you go back through their archives, all the way back to uh, March 11, 2011, you'll find these people were maniacal, lying, just unbelievable. But the link below is the Falkland Syndrome Fukushima meltdown that caused 10,000 Chernobyls in the South Atlantic. Well, um, you know, the next time I do a video, I'll be putting up a story about Chernobyl. And Chernobyl lasted 10 days. And so... I'll bring up that chat room just in case I disappear. Chernobyl. Hi, Kate. And Kate's got uh, the Fukushima Hound, so you'll find links below to that. And to all, most of these people, and to their, if you see their comments there, that's a link directly to their site. But just to make sure everybody understands really, truly why Fukushima is such an issue, and the best way to look at it is Chernobyl lasted 10 days, and the estimated released just cesium alone around 600 Hiroshima bombs worth in 10 days. Now Fukushima is 1,470 days. So divided by 10 is 147. And you multiply it by 600 Hiroshima bombs. And so you're over a half a million Hiroshima bombs. But that's not counting the fact that Fukushima, because a melted reactor is different than a nuclear bomb explosion. And so if Chernobyl had lasted another 10 days, it would have been more radiation than all the nuclear bombs set off on this planet that we know about, and in the atmosphere, and the ocean, and everywhere else. Because the chain reaction is cannibalizing everything around it, and everything that touches it is full of atoms. On a scale of planetary stars and planets, trillions and trillions per minute can be released because you tune up the atoms, you're ionizing, radiating the atoms. That's what made Chernobyl so bad. But the ch chain reaction at Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. And Fukushima hasn't. And Fukushima, each reactor is over three times the size of Chernobyl. Each reactor in Fukushima is 100% meltdown. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl, one-third the size. And Chernobyl used graphite. 
And in Japan, they were using reprocessed, reclaimed plutonium and uranium from the old Cold War missiles. So they took missiles that already went through a chain reaction. They're already two million times worse than the carcinogenic elements they were originally using that were refined. And then they put them through a chain reaction again. So it's two million times, two million times. And so that's what makes these elements from Fukushima and Chernobyl so dangerous. Chernobyl had went through the chain reaction, but Fukushima was reprocessed missiles, much bigger reactors, much more inventory, just an amazing difference on the inventory alone in Chernobyl. And Fukushima had fuel pools on the roof, and the fuel pools are where they took the 5 million pounds out of the reactors every 18 months and put them up on the roof for a couple of decades to cool down. It's supposed to be 5 or 10 years, but the Japanese have been doing it for decades. they got nowhere else to put it. And, and they were actually putting a true chain reaction again, if they were getting... And that was illegal under their constitution. And so what they created was these horrible elements, radioactive isotopes. Now you'll hear about potato chips and, friend, and, and uh, bananas as being radioactive. And you'll hear about walking in sunshine as, as you're always surrounded by radiation. These are actually not radiation, they're emitters. And they only emit about one ten thousandth of a second. And so that's not enough to harm anybody, whereas Fukushima's radiation, everything is a hot particle because of the reclaimed plutonium uranium. And so when you ingest that, you're getting an x-ray, per se, every second of your life, and 1,440 minutes a day, times 60, times your lifetime. And so that's the difference, is that a potato is harmless and everything on the planet is acclimated to it. The stuff that comes out of the chain reaction are ionized radiated elements and that's why we have terrorist laws, so they don't get their hands on it and turn it into a dirty bomb. And that's why we have nuclear waste sites, and that's why we gave them so much monetary and authority, and we gave them so much of land and everything else, and equipment, just billions and billions and billions of dollars to try to make this work. And nuclear power only supplies 3% of the electricity on the planet. Nuclear power, each power plant is boiling a million gallons a minute. And so, hi Sylvia, and so think about a million gallons a minute, a glass of salt water has 75 to 100 million phytoplankton. That's the very basis of the food chain and the oxygen chain and the biggest carbon sequesterer on the planet. And so radiation falls into the sky like a snowstorm, but you can't see it. But does that mean it's not happening? Of course not. And so these elements, they just imagine a snowstorm coming over the ocean and all the snow that's going down into the ocean is radioactive. And the snowstorm never stops. But it's invisible. And so that's why the phytoplankton are wiped out because they're single-celled animals. And so there's going to be a lot less oxygen on the planet and certainly in the ocean. And so right off the bat you're, you're, you're creating this environment where nothing else can tolerate it. And so Fukushima... You know, Chernobyl lasts 10 days, and that's why they got that sarcophagus over. They can't put a sarcophagus over Fukushima's reactors, like a proper sarcophagus, if there is such a thing. They can't put one there because Fukushima never stopped the chain reaction, and whereas Chernobyl did. And they hastily built a sarcophagus over it, and now they're building a new one to put over it. And that's known as the Wigner effect, where it breaks down materials dramatically in a short period of time. That's a well-known effect about radiation. You should see Christina Consolo's Radchick and Lorraine Moret's videos about that at Radchick on YouTube. And they really flush it out really well in a, in a, a set of videos. And I know Miss Melky has an archive of all kinds of this stuff too. And you'll find links below. And just make sure I'm saying hi to everybody because we probably won't get another live stream till I get back home. We've been on the ocean since um, the end of November. Or I guess, yeah, the end of no very end of November. And the trip is still ongoing. We've reached the nor most northwesterly point of Canada. And we've done around 104 nautical miles of the coastline on the east side. This is an island, an archipelago isolated off the coastline of British Columbia, Canada. It's coveted as Mother Nature's finest. And out of 5,600 very, very visible species, 
and 6,500 invertebrates without the backbones, uh, we find less than, once again, less than 100 species, no extra species that we never found already on the coastline of British Columbia, Canada. And, you know, most of the coastline, you should be looking at, say, 600 algae, for instance, at the shoreline. Very dangerous to go ashore at low tide. You can go ashore anywhere on the coastline of British Columbia, and it's not dangerous because the algaes are missing, and there's only a couple hanging on. Kelp weed is the most popular. If that one disappeared, there will literally be nothing left on the coastline. It'll be like uh, up in a mountain in a rock pile where there's nothing on the rocks. It's very startling, very striking, very worrisome that the media doesn't try to explain it away as global warming. They don't try to, to even talk about it or acknowledge it. But what they do do is keep telling you that it's like a banana, that it's like a potato chip, that it's like walking in sunshine, that it's like flying on an airplane. And you can't do any of that. You can't find any of that with a Geiger counter. That's not ionized radiation. It's extremely unimaginably low-level background radi uh, emitters. It's not radiation, see? There's around 260 natural emitters on the planet, but they tell you it's like it's radiation. You're surrounded by this stuff. These are emitters that, once again, only live one ten thousandth of a second. And everything on the planet is acclimated through genetic superior selection over millenniums. I'm burping while I'm talking. And so I got all my bags are packed up, all my groceries are picked up, the boat is fueled up, and we're gonna head I'm gonna head down to Langara shortly in an hour or two. And Langara's around thirty five nautical miles. It's time to get at the harbor and that from where I'm to in Masset. And Masset is kept warm all year by the warm currents coming over from Japan. I gotta keep saying that for some reason, because the irony of that one is, you know, there can't be no radiation, but there's warm water coming over from Japan, Dana. Yeah, that's true, but not radiation, Dana. And the people that are saying that are probably really good people, and they just don't understand how this works, and they're brainwashed by the media that keeps telling them it's like a banana or it's like potassium-40. Or like Jay Collins says, there's not, oh, there's a whole lot more natural radiation in the ocean than there is Fukushima, and so you don't have to worry about it. And so the only species that are left on the coastline are full of radiation. And so if you eat that, one of you guys are going to have to eat the atom with the isotope that are man-made into it and that lasts for millions of years. And so if you eat that, you're going to, in about five years, you'll get a cancer because these are hot particles. And it's completely different than a nuclear explosion. Only 5% of the product becomes fissional product. Or if the fissional product becomes aerosol and airborne and atomized, whereas with a chain reaction, everything that's coming out of there, like a perpetual motion machine, murder machine, is from the chain reaction, has come in contact with the fissional products, and it has become ionized and radiated. It's a whole different ballgame. It's a whole maniacal system that now is desperate to tell you, and you can see the, the link below about the register where they're making fun of it, and it's despicable. Now, I downloaded everything they got on their site to come out and hammer them later. Hi, Thomas. That's Thomas Ackerman. You'll find Thomas's link below. I like Thomas a lot, and I watch his videos whenever I get an opportunity. Unfortunately, the last couple of months, I don't get it, but I'll catch up. And that's somebody I turn to because he's a normal, everyday person, but a very talented person, and sees the world through another angle, and I don't see that angle ever. And so we're always happy. Hi, Amthurst. We're always happy to see everybody. And I like to put recognitions to the people that put themselves out forward and, fr and frontwards into this battle. And that's just the way it is with me, and everybody knows that about me. And it's important that, you know, you remember when you're looking for information, you can't find it. Thomas doesn't stop. Kevin Blanche doesn't stop. Miss Milky, Missing Sky are people that don't stop. And just because they're not in links underneath my video, I can't put everybody underneath my video. Don't mean they're, they're not trying their hardest. And I just want people to understand that. But there are people out there that are trying hard. And let me see who else we got anybody there that I didn't say hi to. And I'll keep going. Because I'll digress. It's a live stream. We don't get to do it very often. And I figure if I can get out a bit of a live stream, it's better than no, nothing of a live stream. And so we're photographing the coastline of British Columbia. The radiation levels 
have already been well documented. There is no debate about radiation hitting this coastline anymore. If you actually look at the data at the nuclearproctologist.org for Canada or for the Pacific Ocean or for California or America, because if you, you know, the radiation that showed up doesn't turn to fury, doesn't disappear the next day. So when it shows up, it means it's real and it means everything else that coming behind it has to be real too. And because we can't contain a melted reactor and the jet streams come straight across to North America and they, 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 they you can call it dispersing in one sense, but you got to think about how a gram of this stuff produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. And so it can distribute it right around the entire planet can be and is under an invisible snowstorm. But North America more so, the, the Northern Hemisphere more so, because everything gets whisked, not only by the Kurosha current off the coastline in Japan and straight across and is picked up through convection and evaporation by rain and brought it on your coastline and rains out. And we see numbers in California of 20 million becquels, 20 million atoms in a liter of water, in a liter. And it doesn't rain by a liter, so it accumulates. Every liter is another 20 million becquels in that little spot. But that whole community is getting bathed in this radiation, but radiation doesn't just drop you. Oh, I got radiation, you're gonna turn into the Hulk and go running off like Spider-Man or something like that. No, it takes five, six, seven years to manifest for the cancers to be diagnosed, for the autoimmunes to show up and become an issue, but it does. And we know that from the studies of animals that they don't refer to all the studies and the models that they use to talk about radiation in the major institutions are based upon a one minute release Dr. Jacqueline Yates at MIT was telling us that, right? Hi, Talana, Star, hi. And I like saying hi. And Kevin is pushing himself, suffering all the time, pushing himself beyond imagination to do things that, are in, that he shouldn't have to do, that this, our journalists and our academics were supposed to do that the students in the institution should be doing. And thank goodness people like Kevin exist, you know? If we had a few dozen Kevins, I can guarantee you the debate would be raging. And they can't hold that boy back much longer. And they can't marginalize what he's doing. So Fukushima compared to Chernobyl. Uh, just but uh, the reactors, if they didn't have MOX fuel into it, mixed oxide fuel into it, would still be 530,000 um, Hiroshima bombs worth of radiation released into the environment. Over half a million, half a million. Now in context, think about China and India in 79, they were, they were setting off nuclear tests tit for tat. And France set one off during that. But the whole planet took to every street on this planet and marched against them open air testing because they, at that time everybody was aware of how dangerous it was to release these atoms into our environment. Here's Fukushima four years later and minimum, even if it was just graphite like Chernobyl, which is not, it's much more maniacal than, and there's a lot more volume per reactor. Each reactor in Japan has five million pounds. Divide grams, 454 grams into each pound times five million and then multiply it by every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. But don't forget about the fuel pools in the roof. Don't forget just three melter reactors hemorrhaging like a perpetual murder machine till the end of time because we won't address it. We won't treat it with the urgency and the, the nobility that it deserves and the respect that it deserves. This is no different than a meteorite coming at our planet. And at some point, we will treat it like that. Make no mistake. And the damage has been done dramatically to our environment, to our oceans, to think about nuclear uh, waste dumped in the ocean, that's acidification, that kills all the life in the ocean that deals with the normal pollution in the ocean, chews it up. You know, that's what nuclear does, it just destroys everything it comes in contact to, but they have to tell you it's like a banana and to lie to you, they can't tell you the truth. And that's, a, that's an easy provable lie. You won't find potassium plumes from a nuclear release because that's not what it creates. Instead of potassium, it creates cesium-137, 134. It acts the same way as potassium. 
And potassium is re-liberated from your soils by plants and trees. Every year by the pollen, by the needles on the pine trees. So, the, you know, it's constantly being recycled over and over and over and over. It's not going to go away. It's not going to stop it from being radiation. You can't burn this with a torch and kill one of these atoms. They're created in the bells of hell. Yeah, I lost a bit of weight. Oh, you bet I did. I, <laughs> I haven't stopped since I've been... Uh, it's incredible. I'll just jump gears. It's hard to do what I'm doing every day. It's so difficult, you know, to ask people for help constantly, to support me constantly. That's worn me out more than anything else. And so I'm really happy the trip is over. And I'm really happy that everybody stood by me and that we we got the data. And so unfortunately the data shows just, you know, a horror show, an absolute terrible, terrible outcome and is very bleak to say the least. But at least everybody will have access to that because they couldn't do it themselves. People couldn't go out and get this data themselves. And the only way it was going to show up is if we went and done it. And that's something to be extremely, extremely proud of. It's the first time in history that we've been able to get on the same playing fields as these people. It's the first time in history with the internet that we've been able to challenge their nonsense of potato chips. The radiation is like a potato chip or it's like a banana or it's like walking in sunshine. And they have just tortured every generation up to this stage. And now they're still trying to do that, but they don't seem to really understand that the internet is real. That the internet, people can look it up and see they're a lawyer. And, but they keep lying. They just keep telling that same lie now for 70 years. That is like a potato chip, and it's not. It's got nothing to do with potato chips. That's potassium-40. Everything on the planet has potassium-40. It's homeostasis. And every time I do a live stream, I have to apologize because we have to explain that because it is so confusing and because it does cause such a great divide and because it does manipulate the consensus and that is done on purpose and is done with malicious intent and it's done by people that are repulsive and that are not accountable or not held account and that are not even challenged and that there's no such thing as a debate because they won't have that interview if there's an opposing side because they can only say one side. I can stand up to any of them and rip their entire narrative to shreds in 15 minutes. They can't have that happen to them. And so they have to be propagated out there by a machine that won't do it to them, which is our media. So the media is not going to challenge them. And so they have sanctuary only there. That's the only spot they can have sanctuary. In the real world, they have no sanctuary no matter where they try to go. Hi, Red Chick! <laughs> data, data, data! <laughs> that doesn't happen. Once again, there's Red Chick, folks. And she'll tell you about the Wigner effect. I'll probably pronounce it wrong eight different ways before the video is finished. And, but once again, this, these are researchers, and you can, you'll find links to uh, Christina Consolo below, Radchik. These are researchers who, who will give you a whole different perspective than what I do. And it's like Lorraine Moret will take you way down a rabbit hole I couldn't even consider. I can't even dream of learning that much knowledge because she has a lifetime dedicated to it. And she's done lectures all over this planet because she gets it. Not because it's, fun being harassed and stalked and intimidated and threatened, but because it's compelled. That's why we all exist. Solar mechanic, Paul, and we got them all cruising in as the show is winding down, but we'll keep going for a little while longer. We got 23 minutes in. And so the expedition for life is going to move up this coastline and it's gonna document the rest of it. And then we're in the next couple of weeks, I suspect hopefully I'll be home in two or three or four weeks, depending on the weather. The weather's just rotten. I got a little break in the weather, so I'm going to head out on the boat this evening, and I'll get up and get onto a camboy up at Langira somewhere, and I'll be pinned down there for three days before I can even consider getting out of there. It's going to be north, northwesterlies, northeasterlies, and I'm on the north end, so it's not going to be any fun. It's going to be cold. And we do got the stove working perfectly, by the way, for everybody, the diesel. It's absolutely perfect again, and we have all the groceries, all the fuels. We have a thousand pounds of fuel on board, and so we're in good shape. We're going to go finish this off, 
and then get out of here and get back to the mainland. So I work my way back home and I'll worry about it. Yeah, the trip, to me, the trip is basically over. I can't, can, it's not tenable to keep going for me for sure. But the urgency was that we couldn't wait. The urgency was that it, we needed that momentum. The urgency was that we didn't know if we could rally enough to, to pull the whole trip off and get that data. And now we don't have to worry about that because that's exactly what we've done. That's incredible that we pulled this off and that we got the data and that is definitive. And so now we're seeing the narrative starting to come out in the media where they know they can't hide it much longer and they got to start easing it out, rolling it out. And, and that's what we've been seeing for the last couple of months. They're starting to roll out the truth. And the maniacal systems out there like Goddard's Journal, who... Um, is supposed to be subjective, is supposed to be neutral, and instead is lies constantly to everybody about potassium-40. Oh, there's uh, 600 times more potassium-40 in a tuna than there is uh, man-made radioactivity. And so if you die, you most likely, 99% of the likely, you would have died from natural potassium-40. No, it doesn't work that way. But, they, but that's how they trick everybody, and that's why we couldn't have a debate. And so when I get back, I, I got a whole bunch of these people I'm going to eviscerate constantly. Yeah, it's time for a rest. And Cornell, like Sea Star is saying, Cornell played their best card on the Sea Stars, but it didn't work because they didn't try to identify the pathogen or the mystery virus. They just said, oh, it's probably a mystery virus or a pathogen. And like Radchick will tell you, Christine Consoli will tell you, Sea Stars are using salt water like blood. And so they should be affected first, and they were. and Because they're such a visible part of the ocean. And so one species could have six, seven, eight different vibrant colors. And so when you're talking about 70-odd species, you're talking about an amazing amount of colors would normally be on your coastline. And British Columbia doesn't get ice in the winter. British Columbia species are all year long. There's no change in the species on the coastline. And there is a couple of species that you won't see as much of in the winter, but the other 5,000 plus, you will. And so it always looks the same, very full of life, but it doesn't anymore. It's all missing. It's very difficult to find anything. Certainly, we've covered that over. Dot hearts, Miss Milky, God hearts, turn into dart hearts. Hi, Randy, Patrick, and Donna Case. Yeah, I think so, Donna. People are getting it. And there you go, folks. That was just a quick video so I can show you a live stream. You can see me in real time. We can say hi and stuff like that. But it gets everybody up to speed. And they are on top of the food chain. Nothing really eats starfish. That's Miss Milky. And people milk. People melt necks. I'm melting. Melting. Hopefully the nuclear PR firms, we can get videos of that and stick it up on YouTube. More of that when I get back. Um, I'm definitely not happy with those people anymore. Look, you know, people need to realize that we flushed this out. We live streamed for almost a year on this channel, Beautiful Girl by Dana. And we live streamed usually around 25 to 50 to 100 headlines a night. New headlines, not the same headlines, but new headlines on the subject of Fukushima. And so just one of these nights was enough to flush it up, but we'd done it for almost a year. And then we went out on the coastline and we'd done our own investigation. And then when we realized there really was a problem, we, we understood we had to go and find out how far this extended and hopefully it wouldn't be all the way up the coastline. And even as I headed to the Charlottes after all this time, I still had hope. And, you know, I don't anymore. I can't. How can I? If I can't find, if I can't find, if I can't identify it. And I'm into the wildest places imaginable. And I have everything possible that you would need on the ocean to get the job done. And I utilize it constantly. And that's why I haven't gone back. It's because we, we have to know and be able to prove in order to even try to have a debate that we have these issues. And so I'm going to let it go with that. I'll say hi to everybody. And thank you. Once again, we still got a ways to go. And so I'll still have to raise money for the last part of this trip coming up. But we're okay for another week and a half or two weeks. And 
But once again, so it will be my last time I got to raise funds for this. I think will be the next fundraiser in a couple of weeks, and that's proper and that's right. You know, we finish out the trip and we don't have to look back and say we should have kept going and done this and done that because they're going to beat us up about that little section too. Well, that's not happening. We're going to finish out the trip. The weather's getting better anyway. Doing it through the winter was tough, tough go, but it had to get done. Make no mistake, I would much rather do it in the summertime and just beautiful temperatures and beautiful conditions. But we're talking about a dead Pacific Ocean. We're talking about annihilation of all the species and the coastline. We're talking about all the missing birds. We're talking about just an impact upon every Pacific nation country. We're talking about till the end of time. We're talking about radionucleoids that they lied to you for seven years and claimed it was like a banana and potato chip, so you wouldn't know any better. So you wouldn't be worried about it and, and ask them to do the proper thing. And now they went too far. Once again, Chernobyl was graphite. It was one third the size and a 30% meltdown. And it stopped after 10 days. Fukushima never stopped. That, that's the only reason you got a sarcophagus over his chair and all because it stopped after 10 days. Fukushima never stopped. Fukushima will never stop because we won't get a chance to have a debate unless we've done something like we've done. And we did. And we're better. We, we are the generation that stepped up to the plate and done the moral and ethical thing. And no matter what the outcome of this is, you know, that's our legacy is that we didn't say, well, I'm just one person, I can't do it. And we said, together we are. Together we maybe can. And then we did. And so here we are. And I'm so grateful. Well, okay, folks. You got nobody new, Malzik. You're welcome. And nobody knew I can say hi to. I said hi to everybody just to make sure. And... Because that's what these live streams are about, a little community. Hugs for everybody. Check out Rad Chick. Her links are below. Kevin, Thomas, Miss Melky, Missing Sky, and everybody else. There's all kinds of links below. It's not just me. I'm not the only person that's out there shoving back. There's so many talented people below, and so many talented people I haven't even found. And we're doing our part, right? That's what we're doing. And we're not, we don't have regrets. And the trip is almost over. And so I'm really, 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 truly grateful that we made it to where I feel that we've done everything we can. I can't consider doing anything extra because we've done everything possible and we've done it right and we've done it through the moral and ethical routine. So hugs for everybody. I'll let you go. 32 minutes. That was longer than I was expecting. I hope the stream came out, came out good and I'll be back in in a few days and I'll it won't be a live stream, but I'll post a little video to get you updated on the Langira area and the Lower Charlottes at that time because we haven't really covered though, that data, those pictures because it's been a hellish trip. But nevertheless, you know, they can't ignore us anymore. And that's something to be extremely uh, proud.